And welcome once again to the Horizon Roundtable. I am Bob McDonald. You can catch me on Twitter at Bob McDonald. And you can catch me um, every week on uh, my new home, campuspressbox.com, where you can catch my uh, Cleveland State column. And with me as always, Jimmy Lemke from PantherU.com. He's on Twitter at Panther U. You might as well break the bad news to everybody as it relates to uh, what was supposed to go on with the uh, the Black and Gold Club. So you might as well just throw that out right now. Right now. So uh, we have we have a few. The Black and Gold Club is the is a booster club that I, I started with a few fans at Milwaukee. Um, our plan this year was to host a uh, host have a suite at one of the hotels near the horizon league tournament near the Joe Lewis arena. Um, we had, a, we have uh, several of our biggest donors for our program support the black and gold clubs in, in several of our things. We're doing a bobblehead giveaway at a baseball game. We're doing a few different things. The suite was the one that we were really excited about. Uh, we were going to host a suite, you know, Load it up with all kinds of booze and food and all this kind of stuff, and then just have, you know, people can come and go as they please during the you know the conference tournament. Well, um, one of our financial, you know, the, the main financial backer for it went out to, he went out to Detroit for our two game swing at Oakland and Detroit. Um, he spoke with uh, some Olympia people. He spoke with some uh, Horizon League people. He spoke with Detroit people, Oakland people. He spoke with the uh, the hotels, the Greek Town Casino, where the Milwaukee contingent staying. And uh, after he, he after he heard the numbers of tickets sold for all of the schools for both all session and single t- single game passes, um, he's he, he decided that it's just it's not worth it at this year. Just he just he just doesn't think enough people are going to show up. Um, <laughs> This is, and that's this is, it. He's, been, he's, he's done. He's done something similar uh, at uh, the NCAA Frozen Four for 25 years, and he knows that the first couple of years are are very small in getting something like this together. But uh, he's, he says he, he, by his estimation, and this is somebody who's who works in business and in marketing, so he he knows what to expect from him. He, he says the the numbers would just be way too small. For us to even really consider doing it this year, so maybe it's a next year thing, but it, it's not something that we can do this year. And uh, maybe I jumped the gun on saying that it's going to happen, but I, I and I'm kind of sorry about that. So I apologize to everybody that was you know hoping to maybe. Uh, yeah, like, and I was hoping for it because we were gonna. I thought we were. Uh, I was hoping we were gonna be able to. You know, we were gonna do a big old thing for the during for next week, and um, you were gonna be there. And well, I guess better luck my, next year. I suppose that was, that was my plan. You know, fi- financially, it's it's another tough. You know, it's another tough sell for me personally because you know financially, it's it's difficult for me to get there. <laughs> you know, my my. Uh, you know, I had I had talked to my my. Um, awesome. We were you know, going to work around. I was going to figure out how to work enough so that I could make it for the whole tournament. And then we were talking about getting the, you know, there was a bus that was going to go from Milwaukee, and I don't think that bus is going now. I also don't think that the, um, they were going to have two different buses. There was going to be one that was, they were both going to leave Saturday morning in the middle of the, like, 5 a.m. here. They were going to drive out to Detroit, be there in time for the second game. Um, everybody was going to their stay at the Greek Town Casino. There's a big setup. Then one of the buses was going to come back uh, after Milwaukee lost. And at, at, at last case scenario, after the Monday night game, even if Milwaukee won. And then the second bus was going to stay all the way through the tournament and then come back right after the Tuesday night game, the championship game. Uh-huh. But I don't think either of those buses got enough people to go. So I I have spoken with I have spoken with a couple of Olympia people, um, I, so I know I know some of the numbers for the tournament. I'm not going to share them, but it doesn't look good. Hmm. And what this all what this all shakes down to is an, is is what I've been saying all along. I've tried 
I, I in, in deference to our athletic director, I tried to. Yeah, I mean, we we've had a conversation in previous ep- a previous episode that you were kind of warming up to it, and looks like you're back down into the Arctic. <laughs> I was warming up to it because I, I, I want it to do well because I want the horizon link to be a conference that, that can support a neutral site tournament. Uh, I know that Detroit is looking at having, you know, having a, so a bit of a renaissance. So I'm really, I really hope that, you know, I really hope that that city can do better, especially since two of our schools are there and a lot of people that we know, and we've got, you know, had relationship grown relationships with over the years. You know, I like to see that those, you know, things go better for them. Um, but the the fact the facts are the facts. None of none of these ten teams have traveling fan bases. Okay, not one of us. Valpo is the closest thing to it, and you go on their message board, you talk to their fans, and not any one of them is excited about going to this thing. They're angry that it's even happening in the first place. They felt like at least two of the next five years that they were going to be hosting the Horizon League tournament. By the way, when they do host the Horizon League tournament, all you get all these schools that descend upon Valparaiso, Indiana, which is a small town of 30,000 people in a small area of about 100,000 people of Northwest Indiana, and we take it over. And all of a sudden, the Horizon League tournament is the biggest thing in this small town. And now we're going to Detroit, where the Horizon League is going to be. Except for the popcorn festival, by the way, and I'm sure the uh, my, I, I, I don't think I've ever revealed this in previous episodes, but um, but my wife is from Valparaiso, and my in-laws are there. And um, yeah, the popcorn festival is actually bigger. Um, Valparaiso, home of Oral Rebenbacher, by the way. Yes, yes, it is. Um, it, it's, it, so second biggest event in Valparaiso. At, at, for the weekend, we take over Valparaiso. It's really cool. It's really nice. I'm fine with a four day, four games in four days thing. Um, if I if if we were to do that, I wish they would only make it one buy for the. T- it, it doesn't matter. They they screwed up what was a great thing going for this conference that helped the best teams get into the NCAA tournament. And even at, even discounting Butler, the three, the, the four victories, uh, Milwaukee's three and Cleveland States one, the four NCAA tournament victories are more than almost every mid major and low major conference has in, in the last 15 years. And they took it out back and they shot it with a gun. And now we have this garbage tournament in Detroit, Michigan for five years and we're stuck there. And I don't think people in this conference on the East side, I know that I know for Cleveland fans and Detroit fans and Oakland fans, this isn't such a bad thing because you're so close and Youngstown fans probably like it because if, you know, if they exist, they're, they're, they're closer to their school, but Valpo fans know it and UIC knows it and we know it. And I, I like to think that some of the green Bay fans understand it. And I know the right state people understand it. We do not have traveling fan bases. This is not a conference that this is not a conference that can support this at least not yet. And because we're, we're, we're making it difficult we're not prote- you know this protection of the top seed is probably going to end after this year. They're probably going to get rid of the double buy. And if they do that, if Valpo doesn't win this tournament, if Valpo feels too slighted by this move to Detroit for the conference tournament, I don't think people understand the implications of that. I don't think people understand that we might be running off what is now the, what has been the standard bearer in men's basketball for this conference. I don't think they understand that that's a possibility here because we, we put together this garbage tournament. We've got, we renewed a terrible television deal with ESPN, which, which by the way, <clears throat> Fox sports one is, is, is in as many households as ESPN Fox sports two or, you know, NBC sports network, CBS sports, you know, these, these television networks are in the same amount of households as ESPN, U and ESPN two. There are so many options for the television and we renewed with ESPN and we screw and, and in doing so 
with ESPN3, we screwed up what was a great thing going with Horizon League Network because scouts and fans and everybody that had any interest would know that they could go to the Horizon League Network and watch any game. And now they can't. And we have the syndicated deal with um, with Sinclair, which is fine, but nobody that knows actually about might, it. That actually might evolve just because they just bought the uh, the tennis channel, so they yes. that might be a that might be a that, new thing that comes on the uh, that comes that, to the floor. Yeah. So, that's, wow, that's, you know, we we probably should have started with this actually. I, I, I'm just, I'm just saying, uh, we might have to separate. Honestly, we might have to separate this out for its own separate episode, there, Jimmy. The, the, the fact, the Bonus fact episode that, for Jimmy here. We gotta, we gotta, there's, uh, I got, I got a buddy who's a good fan, a uh, good fan of the program. Great friend of mine. His name's Chad Canodal, and he, he says that every now and then, uh, asshole Jimmy comes out, and it's his favorite time because he doesn't care. And that, that's, it, it's, it's where I'm at with this conference. There's, 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 there's no stones in this conference. Nobody. In 15 years, nobody in this conference has had the guts to step up and say, look, Youngstown State plays football, and that's fine, and that's okay for them, but they do not fit the other nine schools in this conference. And Butler did say it, and Butler left. And Loyola did say it, and Loyola left. And you know what? We run off good teams. And Loyola was not a great program, but they could be with the facilities. And Velpo doesn't have the facilities yet, but they could. And if they do, watch out. And the fact the fact of the matter is that we've 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 screwed up anything good we had going with this conference by turning this conference tournament, which was a revolution. It was a model for mid majors and low majors, low major conferences across the country. They looked to it and we screwed up the horizon league network and we added Northern Kentucky probably a year too early. But the fact of the matter is, is that we now have four of the 10 teams in the conference are anchors of this RPI and it's screwing Velpo this year because if you just take out the Youngstown and Northern Kentucky games and Velpo's RPI is probably 25, 20 spots higher, just taking those games out, not even adding in the non-conference games that Velpo could have scheduled in their place. This conference, I am so sick of it. <laughs> I am so sick of it. I, 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 really, I didn't catch that. <laughs> I love I love the relationships that I've been able to to make through talking to people on message boards, on Twitter, at games. Um, I've, I've, the I've, podcast. I, I, through the podcast, you know, I really, I really feel like we've done such hey, a. You're, you're, at least you're not some dude from S- Cleveland State, by the way. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I love what we've. I'm sorry, I saw that. I saw that one day, and I'm like, yeah, that's what kind of reach I have. I, I love. <laughs> I love what we've created, and I feel like this conference in in. I, I feel like they all like John Lacron is is subscribing to this idea of permanent revolution, but not doing it the right way. Like it's like John Lacron adds a team just for the sake of adding them because when Valpo turned us down, they said, "Well, we need to add somebody now to save face." So they went and got Youngstown. At some point in time, and never, it's not going to be today, would. but at some point in time, I'm going to have to I'll have to share with the world the uh, the the nice love letter I got from him back in 2001. <laughs> You got a love letter from John Lacron? Oh yeah. Um, well, well, Jimmy, as as you know, I was a uh, you know from two th- from the end of two thousand one to uh, the to March of two thousand three, I was a I was a mouth content at Cleveland State, as you know, because I was yeah. trying to get rid of Rolly Massimino. And yeah. one of the things I, of course, you know, and so I was very public about it. Um, and he wasn't happy about that. <laughs> To the point where he sent me an email telling me I should be ashamed of myself for putting this site together. And do you know what I did? I posted that bad boy up on my site. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's good that it's good that, that happened for you. You know, that happened because John Lacrone probably knows better now than to ever come at me like that. 
I am just, I am so sick of this. Well, it's, it's funny. It, it's interesting, but it's, 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 it's ironic because your running, your runnings and my runnings are not the only ones he's had. You know, you know that, you know, back in the, back when Loyola was still in the, was still in the horizon league. And I don't know if you remember John Thomas at all. The, um, who was over at Ram- Rambler Media. Oh my God. Those two, but him and LaCrome butted heads a lot. And I oh, mean yeah. a lot, a lot. So, um, whatever. Oh, big Bill, big Bill Rambler. He'll still, you can go on Twitter. He's on there. He'll, he'll go off on LaCrone all the time. You just have to ask him. You know, <laughs> uh, and you know, LaCrone, um, a little, a little like Milwaukee part, you know, for years, I mean, I remember uh, an, a former athletic director who was not Bud Haiti, our longtime athletic director, and I can I can keep that person anonymous because between Bud Haiti retiring in 09 and Amanda Braun getting the job in 2013, we had four or five people that had the job on an interim or permanent basis. So one of these people had shared with me not long into their tenure that John LaCrone at the Horizon League office wanted Kevin O'Connor, our sports information director, gone. What? They did not want they did not want him around. Okay. Uh, and for what reason? They tried to pitch that it was some kind of disrespect thing, but the fact of the matter is that Kevin O'Connor okay. The fact of the matter is that he probably uh, that he has a connection with the Horizon League that no that is totally separate from Milwaukee, and Crone doesn't doesn't like him, and so he was trying to push O'Connor out. Years. And eventually, if you look at our our website now, Kevin O'Connor is no longer a sports information director. He now works for the university. Uh, for, he works in Chapman Hall for the administration. And it's good because Kevin O'Connor was an absolutely excellent sports info director. No offense to every other SID in the conference. I think everybody in the conference has really good SIDs, but Kevin O'Connor was the best. Kevin O'Connor was beyond knowledgeable about not only us, but every other team in the conference. You know, you could sit down and talk with Kevin O'Connor about Cleveland State basketball and he'd go he'd go he'd go uh, you know you know he'd go shot for shot with you and be you you could do a trivia and he'd be able to go with you. The guy was so knowledgeable and he was so good at his job and you know Lacrone wanted him gone and eventually he got him gone. And it's 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 the guy is such I, – I am so done with him as the commissioner of this conference. And whoever is the guy out there that has the Kamish LaCrone Twitter account. Where is that guy? Please, please start that up again because I am so sick. I can't, by the way, I, and that, when that thing came up a couple of years ago, and I can't believe that I, you really – the funny part was, and I really thought that – you actually thought it was a clue. I, I don't thought, think it was. You know, it, it, so right, a couple of years ago, you guys had your Let's Go Vikes message board, and oh, there was God. that guy, that Mr. X guy. That was basically okay. Just- no, no, no. Yeah, don't. All right. You know, first of all, that guy. We're not talking about him. Second of all, again, I really thought it was a parting gift from Loyola. I really did. It might have been, but then I again, really did. this Commission Lacron account keeps like like turning up every now and then. So I don't, I don't know because I, I mostly most of Loyola is pretty much just forgotten about us because they're oh, not. Yeah. Busy. Well, I mean, they, they couldn't. They they sort of. Well, we we played uh, Cleveland State played them this year, so we. I kind of I kind of you know got back into it a little. You know, talked to them a little bit, you know, but not too much. And hey, we won that game. So I, you know, hey, you can't. I can't forget that. <laughs> How many times yeah. has Cleveland State won this year? So. <laughs> yeah, I, I really I really like you know not having a connection with them. <laughs> Honestly, my my connection with Loyola is a lot different than yours, just because of kind of the down years at Cleveland State, you know, where we were kind of really low. And you know, I, I gotta give it, I, I gotta give some real respect to those guys because those guys 
you know, kind of, you know, kept, uh, you know, us wayward Cleveland State fans still, you know, still floating around. I mean, that's saying, you know, without them, I mean, they, you know, you're, you're pretty much looking at a fan base that's stuck on, you know, the the old Cleveland.com college sports board, which was just a freaking wreck. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's where we were. And that's where we were at. And that was, that was an even lower point than, you know, say now, actually. Um, but I have a message board at this point do you sure cleveland state has uh you know tom muskowski's board but isn't it just i'm tom not Mus- there but tom muskowski has his message board yes isn't it just him like posting his own stuff and that's it oh no i'm sure that i haven't been on there forever and ever and ever but i'm sure that there's still like about four or five guys on there somehow some way somewhere but you know but that's a whole other thing. I I, I think that – well, so the thing is, though, and I, I think it's more of an evolution. I mean, because, you know, with the advent of social media, you got a lot less people on the message boards and on Facebook and Twitter. Cleveland State obviously isn't that pro- – had not have that problem because we're not anywhere. So yeah. I mean, that's, that's a whole – that's, that's – we talked about that a little bit. Hey, let me ask you this question, mm-hmm. Bob. The horizon is 18th in the RPI. The summit, yeah. The summit in the RPI. Are you embarrassed that the horizon is that far below the summit league right now? I kind of take responsibility for it as a Cleveland state, you know, from Cleveland state, from Cleveland state standpoint. I mean, that's, it's, I mean, I we're, we're compl- Cleveland state is complicit in this, this anchoring. So, yeah. you know, from, from a Cleveland State standpoint, you know, I, I kind of got to own that we suck this year and there's not much we can do about it. Um, three, years ago, three years ago, if you had told me that Grady, Lewis, and Forbes would all transfer out at the same time and leave and leave you high and dry, I would have said whatever. Five, three or four or five, ten years ago, if you would have told me that Youngstown State would be at, would be below average at best, I would have said, well, yeah, of course, it's Youngstown State. They're a football school. So there's a problem with this picture here. Jimmy, let's review here. With it, let's re- let us review one la- one other thing, and let's be honest with ourselves, because where did all of these schools come from to begin with? Okay? Just- where did all of these schools come from to begin with? Starting in 1994 on, where did all of these schools come from except for Detroit? Where did they come from? They all came from the Summit League, every last one of them. All right, so you can't be surprised that one year. This is the one year where they turn into the sun. They turn into the Summit League. Well, all right, you knew it. at some point in time it was gonna. Happen. I'm not. I'm not surprised. because we're all the damn Summit League. We've been the Summit League forever. It's you know we just had we just had like Xavier's and Butler's masking it forever. That's what happened. Uh, Paul Spicuza, a friend of mine, Paul Spicuza at Milwaukee, and I, we have a, we we make a joke that the American Athletic Conference is actually Conference USA 2.0. Yeah, and, it is. It is. And Conference USA is actually Conference USA 3.0. And yes, the, it is. the fact of the matter is that maybe the Horizon League is Summit League 2.0, but in, mm-hmm. in that respect, that means the Summit League. It is. The Summit League should be MidCon 3.0. So the Summit League should be worse than us still because we all left that conference to be in a better conference, and it's now not better. It's now, in fact, anti. And I'm just – I'm to the point where I look at what the MidCon did in 2007, which was they said to Chicago State, I'm sorry, but here's – Chicago State technically left under their own volition. But and here – and to make matters worse, I just want to throw this other part out there. You know, for years, Horizon League fans have made absolutely complete fun of IP Fort Wayne. And anytime they were mentioned as a possible addition to the Horizon League, everybody had a conniption fit. Where are they at now? They yeah, actually, I, well, they, they're regular season champions now, aren't they? In the Summit League? Oh, Fort Wayne is? State is, I believe. What's that? Oh, well, they, yeah. But it's... He's <laughs> having a good year. Nebraska... They, they, Omaha, they're having a good year. Um, yeah, we make fun of IPFW and 
the alphabet school, alphabet soup schools of Indiana. But the fact, the, the fact of the matter is, is that, that, that that's a smaller conference that booted out the riffraff centenary. The days of centenary is gone. The days of Southern Utah are gone. They have, they have centralized. They centenary have- and Southern Utah were basically stopgap measures because we all left. He, that's, you know, it, it, you know, yeah, sure, I mean, sure, that's what happened. So the stopgaps are gone. Youngstown state was a stopgap because Valpo said no. Well, so Valpo eventually said yes. So what are they still doing here? This is this this is the guest to the party that is just is is just so so embarrassing and has never been good. They've never been good. They were ten and eight one year. One year the entire time they've been in this conference, they've been about five hundred. And if they had one game and swung the other way, they would have been five hundred. And in that season still, they were still not in the top half of the conference. This is a league that is so mind-numbingly stupid. These people don't have the stones to kick out this team, and seven of the nine schools, because NKU didn't have a vote, but seven of the nine ADs voted in, voted for moving the tournament from what made the Horizon League special to this Detroit tournament, which is going to be an absolute joke. And I tell you what, I might go to the Detroit for the title game anyways because I need I, I just feel like I need to be there for the title game because I need to be on ESPN with a big sign that says, thanks for screwing up a good thing. This conference. We'll have to have a nice long conversation about that if you indeed do that. You know that, right? That's 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 kind of goes without saying. <laughs> Should have a closing. I think when we do the closing horizon, the 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 closing horizon podcast. Well, we're gonna also, well gotta remember too, because you know we're, we'll probably be talking because you know we're gonna be talking about you know some of these schools are going to postseason tournaments, so obviously we're gonna be talking a few. We know that one of them's you know we know that we're gonna have one team in the NCAA tournament. If Valpo doesn't win the Horizon League tournament, Valpo's going to the NIT. And then everybody else is probably going to fit in the CBI, the CIT, or this new Vegas 16. So mm-hmm. probably have five teams, maybe six teams in the NCAA in the, in the postseason. Uh-huh. So we'll definitely be able to keep talking about them until, ever, until the last team loses. But So we're probably in our last few podcasts for the year. But I'm saying in our wrap-up, we need to have a I have a frank discussion about the future of the conference. Yeah. Wait, what was this? <laughs> I think yeah. I I, I, I mean, th- yeah, I understand that I'm being very frank, but I think that we I think that I think that there are a lot of people around this conference who care very deeply about their programs and they want the conference to be great. And the the Horizon League should be it's so much better than it is. And it's interesting that you mention all of this because as, and which brings me to my next question, which is something that I think you brought up before we even started the podcast. In fact, I think you brought this up over the summer. Did not, did the, didn't the horizon league actually have some sort of fan survey thing where they were just trying, where it uh, was, was that all bullshit or something? Uh, because I mean, it, it you know, I'm just, it's an excellent, I'm, I'm not saying it was or not. I'm just asking a, a, an honest question here. What was the point of the fan survey? I'm going to try and not swear. I'm going to try to not swear right now. Uh, wow, I just said bullshit. <laughs> try and not do it because I know if I get, if I get one in this tirade, it's going to turn into 50. So yes, there was a survey. Uh-huh. Yes. Everybody took it. Everybody that listens to this podcast probably took that survey. Okay, I have a confession to make. I didn't take it. Sorry. All right, that's fine. So, well, <laughs> fine. there's probably, probably a few more of you. There was a survey. A lot of us did l- say something, and it was ignored completely from the, from the get-go. And I, I have... 
you know, we hear the Horizon League do the same kind of conference speak that you hear from everybody else. Is that it's about the fans? It's about the fans. It's about the athletes. Bullshit! It is. <laughs> I'm sorry, but come on. I'm sorry, but you know, if if I can extrapolate from the the love letter I got 15 years ago, it is you know, it, it has been about the. It, it, as I understand it, it was about it was supposed to be about the athletes, and I you know, and that's totally a great worthy cause because you know we got some you know got some great student athletes but you know don't don't come up with it don't come up with the fan survey thing and kind of pretend that you have the fans that you know you, you have some sort of inkling about the fans you know don't don't do that i mean i, I you may possibly do that but i mean i, I it's I don't know. You, you're you're more pissed off about it than I am. But you know. <laughs> I met with our athletic director Amanda Broad not long after this. The after I broke the news that we were going to Detroit, and they came out with it. Uh, I, had, I had I had I had sat down with her, and she had given me her pitch. And part of it was athlete welfare. Part of it was we can build this into something over a couple of years. That sound that sounds all like well and good. And I said, look, you know what? Um, in deference to you, I'm going to I'm going to give it a year. I'm going to give it I'm going to give it one shot. Well, yeah, you meant you you'd mentioned that at the, like I think during one of the first couple of episodes that you were going to kind of give it the old college try, if you will. The closer we get to it, the more I just know it's going to be an absolute shit show. I just I just I just know it. I know it because I know Olympia is only doing this to get the Big Ten tournament, and I know. That seven of the nine, the seven of the nine athletic directors thought that this was a good idea, and ours was one. And I just, I know that she's, she's a very. I'm sure, intelligent. ours was one too, but it was probably more for proximity purposes than anything. Or, or, but I, or, or maybe, or maybe, or maybe John Perry abstained because he was asleep because he forgot his. I don't know what the hell happened, but anyway. <laughs> Jamie voted for it. I'm sure he did because he, you know, again, it's a proximity thing because he, you know, whatever. It was, Northern Kentucky didn't have a vote in it. It was it was UIC and Valpo against everybody else for and all and of the other seven athletic directors, Detroit and Oakland are obvious. Cleveland State should be obvious. Youngstown's obvious. Of course. I would have liked to have th- thought that Bob Grant from Wright State would have been smart enough to know that, or or would have been yeah would have been smart enough to know that this is bad. I would have liked to have thought that Mary Ellen Gillespie would have known that this was bad news. I would have, I, I am, I am very, very sad to know that our athletic director said yes to this. I am just, it, I, I, I hope, I hope for her case that this does well, but I'm not expecting much. I'm not expecting it. I am, I am expecting just, you're basically expect what it sounds like and let me see if i can put this in perspective for you jimmy sounds like you're expecting um the horizon tournament at in detroit to draw about as much as cleveland state does at the queue does that sound about right i think it'll be a little bit more i think we're gonna have legit oh are we optimistic if Valpo <laughs> makes the title game that you'll have legitimately about 15. If Valpo Oakland is the title game, that is the only way I can see this, like having as much as 4,000 fans. But if El Valpo and Oakland do not, or Detroit doesn't make it, and in fact, I don't even think Detroit, because the numbers I heard from Detroit as far as the all-session tickets go, make me think that even Detroit's not going to show up for its own tournament nine miles away. So... If, if Valpo and, and Oakland are in the title game, I think we'll have about may you know maybe four thousand four thousand in a arena that fits seventeen thousand, eighteen thousand, something let like me, that. Let me tell you, what is the what is this conference's biggest problem? We talked one one of the biggest problems we talked about it before is that almost all of our arenas are too big. Your arena, uh, my arena, my arena, arena, Northern Kentucky's arena, Wright State's arena, Ever- Detroit's arena, Young Youngstown's arena. 
The only arenas that are oak of, of solid size for who they are are Valpo's Arc and Oakland's Arena. UIC's Pavilion is too big too. And it has nothing to do with the fact that Valpo and Oakland are the two biggest, two best teams in the conference right now. It has to do with the fact that Valpo and Oakland are, the, their arenas are smaller. The A-10 have plenty of arenas that are 4,000, 5,000 seats. The East Coast of course they are. The East Coast has plenty of seats. There's plenty of arenas that are only 2,000 seats. A couple of them are 1,500. You know, I see you know, their jungle how they used to play and would fit perfectly. Well, and the, well he, the other thing too, and this, this is something I never understood is this idea of the, the this, this whole thing about, about arena sizes and whatnot. And I mean, it was the purpose of putting that together that in the event that one of these teams hosted the horizon league tournament, they would have enough room for everybody um, and now, since that is no longer the case, what's the point of having an arena size requirement? It's, maybe, maybe it's about maybe what this tournament is about is about showing everybody what the rest of the Horizon League season is. It's about a bunch of teams with ten thousand seat or season teams with arenas around ten to eleven thousand seats that all fill about you know a quarter of that. Is that what this tournament's about? I don't think so because I've seen Green Bay. Wright State, Milwaukee. I've seen those three schools fill their gyms. I've seen Valpo fill its gym. I've seen that, and that's half the conference. And if you and if you, and if if people are paying attention, those are three of the best four teams of the conference this year. Those are three of the best five or six programs every year. And Oakland a team that hasn't hosted the conference tournament would fill the hell out of that old arena. That thing would be filled to the brim. Sure. I'm, I'm sorry, but this conference isn't there. And it, it, it may never be there because if Valpo gets screwed out of this, Valpo, Valpo may up and leave. And some people may say, well, where do they go? It's like, well, the Valley. Well, if the Valley wants to take them, the Valley wants to take them, you know, good for them. And I hope that the Valley would take us too. But the but I'm not I'm tired I'm tired of I don't want to worry about what other conference any of us will go to. I don't care about that. I I care about these ten teams because I've built a lot of relationships with a lot of you guys over the years and I'm very happy with the people of the Horizon League that are uh, at at the schools. You know, I, I know that we can go back years of discussions, you know, we, there's, there's certain topics that have, that we've talked about for years that we've, we've all built relationships you know, with each other. And that's, that's what a conference is. And that's great for the conference, but I just feel like this conference office and John LaCrone at the top, just squeezing it just trying to squeeze a little bit more legacy, just trying to squeeze a couple more dollars that by the way, aren't coming. You know, we could have turned, we could have turned the television contract, the, the, the first right, the first tier television contract. We could have turned that into a bidding war between four, between four channels. And we didn't because we're the one mid major conference. We're, we're one of the only mid major conferences we're, we're, we're all over the biggest media markets of the Midwest. Mm-hmm. We're the only ones that do it. And, and that's it. Yeah. And, and, and again, I think I talked about this. I, I've, I've talked about this before where, you know, in spite of the fact that you do have, you, you know, you, you, you have kind of a, there's kind of, you know, the attendance might not be there. The, you know, the buzz might be there. The advertisers, they, 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 there's, there's some value there. They, they think there's some, there's a potential audience there. There's a potential target market. Cleveland state's a good example. Like I said, um, you know, again, see your, see your point is a, is a major sponsor for us. Cintas is a major sponsor for us. So, I mean, if they see it and there's Cleveland and that's just one, small you know that's one tenth of the horizon league you know, you, you know and, and also too you have detroit don't doesn't detroit have its own channel in detroit yeah it's not that it's not that um 
I, I just bring up the cities and everything in the television contract because it's another example about the horizon league just settling for whatever ESPN will give them. And was it cool Friday night? To have a couple get a couple of our games. Yeah, the, the Oakland Detroit game and the Valpo Milwaukee game was it cool to have both of the games talked about on Sports Center? Sure, but the fact and 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 does it suck? You know, the Big East schools complain about how ESPN totally ignores them because they're on Fox Sports One. Yeah, but I, I I don't care. I need to be on national television. That's what I need, and I'm I'm sure that NBC or CBS would be willing to give us a lot more national television games. Absolutely. <laughs> ESPN would be able to give, especially sure. NBCSN. I mean, you know, but it's one more. And in each of those, th- in, in in the case of each of those three, we'd be able to keep the Horizon League Network, which is free and open and able and able to be viewed by anybody on the internet. And now the ESPN three has got it. There's a paywall behind it, and it's just you're just, you're, you're putting up walls. You're putting up walls. You know, Robert. How exactly? Robert, that because you know as well as I do, there are certain people who do not have, uh, for one reason, who do not have access to ESPN three, the Watch ESPN app. I do, um, and let me. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Does, does Comcast no longer? Have, I think one of the big major carriers doesn't have ESPN three anymore, if I'm not mistaken. And I can't remember which one it is. I'm not worried about it because even you know the carriers that do have it, it's part of a sports package. So it's not like I, I, what I'm saying is basic cable. You need to be on basic cable, and NBC, Fox Sports One. The, these are basic cable channels. So if you're not on basic cable, then there's no, there's no point. So what my what my my what I'm saying is that you know Horizon League keeps putting up walls, keep putting up fences. And what Robert Frost said is that good fences make good neighbors. And what it means is that what he, what he meant by that is that you alienate people. You know, you're 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 alienating people from each other. And the last thing the Horizon League needs to do is minimize the audience. And that's what this conference tournament does. And that's what this conference television contract does. Because we're putting up a lot of our games that used to be free for everybody behind a paywall. It's behind a paywall. You've got to have a cable subscription. You know, you've got you, you gone gone is the time when I without without a cable subscription could put up four games, you know, on one TV screen and okay. watch all four of the Tuesday night conference tournament games on the same screen before getting ready to go get up and go to the conference tournament wherever it was, whether it was Indianapolis or Valparaiso or Green Bay or wherever. And that, con- that now you put up the paywall. So now somebody who may love co- college basketball, but – they don't have the they don't have ESPN. They just they just don't have it. There's there's you know there's no way I I can afford to go out and get a cable subscription to watch ESPN three and that's what I did this year. You know so it, it's uh, so it's not a problem for me, but it's a problem for problem for the guy who doesn't know. Or but, even worse, it's a, or even worse. Uh, what if you're a, what if you're a student at one of these schools? Exactly. Living in the dorms and you know they're not going to have it. You alienate you alienate people from and not just and not just for the basketball games for any game since as we know all of these games are on ESPN three be it right. basketball soccer volleyball we were anything uh, we were our baseball team was on um, Fox Sports one last Friday in a game in one of our game our uh, series with uh, Texas Tech. It was 25th in the country, and the, unfortunately, the game that we won wasn't the game that was televised. But it was, it was, it was really cool to see that. But that's because I got to put it up on the big screen at the dealership. It was cool because it was it was cable television. But if that was ESPN, you know, like nobody's getting getting the Chromecast and putting it into the big TV finagling it to try and get to the absolute right thing and if it's and, yeah, and, it's, how, and you're not gonna and you're not gonna go and you're not gonna go into and believe me you're not you're also not gonna go into a bar in cleveland and ask somebody to put espn3 up um first of all you know first of all that you'd get laughed out of the you this is cleveland you'd get laughed out of the you'd get laughed out of the bar second of all you know they're not set up for that sort of thing a lot of them aren't so what I'm saying is you alienate people with that. With the conference tournament, 
you know, I, I know that four of the four of the ten schools have proven that they can that they can pack in their arenas. And now those people are looking at going out on the east side of the conference. And we don't it, this is this is this is no this is apologies to you guys because I hell I'm, you apologizing us for <laughs> I made friends at Cleveland. I've definitely made friends from Oakland, and um, but I, I really feel like that if you that the uh, the the north the, the eastern side of the conference, um, for the most part, hasn't been the side of the conference that holds up its bargain as far as good basketball. Mm. And so why is this? Why is it that we have thrown the conference tournament? in a neutral site, which shouldn't have happened in the first place. Why are we throwing it all the way out there? Why wasn't this in Chicago? Why wasn't this in an area? No, uh, you know what? Why was it? That's my question. And that's actually my bigger question. I know why it wasn't in Chicago because again, competing with the big 10 tournament, don't want to get into that. Indianapolis, on the other hand, there's no why the hell is it not in Indianapolis? I don't understand this. First of all, there's not a team there anymore, obviously. Second of all, it's in closer proximity you know, travel wise, it's more a central location. And third of all, the Horizon League is based in Indianapolis. So when you take those three things into consideration, I don't understand why. I and that's the question I had at the very beginning: Why wasn't it in Indianapolis? I'm sure there are many reasons why it's not been. I know that with uh, I know that you you want when you have a neutral side tournament. Uh, if you're a mid major conference, you want to have a team close by. So, like, when the CAA had their conference tournament go neutral, they had it in Richmond. It wasn't at VCU's gym, but it was in Richmond. So, a lot of the conference teams really just just didn't like that, you know, VCU was hosting it because they thought that VCU had had an advantage, and they did. And anybody from Detroit and Oakland who's listening to this who doesn't think you have a competitive advantage in the tournament, excuse me, but wake up you do and stop acting like you don't and just get over it. But the fact, but the, it, 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 what's done is done. It's not your fault as fans. It's the fault of Olympia and the horizon league canoodling and getting out of here. You want, you want to have a home team or at least a team close by because you want to have, you want to have some team to be able to bring a bunch of fans and you hope that Oakland can bring a lot of fans to the conference tournament. Um, I know that I'm, I'm pretty sure Detroit's not going to do that. And the, the fact of the matter is, is that with Indianapolis, there is no team, you know, until John LaCrone decides he wants to, you know, further, he wants to further, you know, tighten down his legacy. He had IPFW and IUPUI this off season, which is all would anybody listening to this put it past that guy at this point? <laughs> the, the, <laughs> uh, there's no team. I, no, honestly, I would have taken IUP while Ron Hunter was there, but not anymore. <laughs> there's no, there's no, uh, there's not a bunch of teams there, or there's not a team there where they can be a bunch of fans to get, you know, give them a base. So we talk about how Detroit is such a great thing because you have the two schools that are, you know, Detroit, you know, Oakland is 25, 30 miles away. And then you have Detroit, which is 10 miles away, but nobody, you know, when we talk about Indianapolis, no, there's no team nearby. Wright state's the closest, which is two hours away. Then Valpo is, I think about three hours away, I want to say, but the, or, you know, I think Valpo is also two hours away for um, where, I think from I'm, Detroit? I think I've no from uh Valpo to Indianapolis. In, uh hour and a half, actually. I think it's yeah. an hour and a half. The, so there's so I understand. I think yeah, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think Valpo and Wright State are like an hour and a half away from Indianapolis. Here, here, but here with Chicago. As is northern Kentucky, I think. They're not that yeah, those those two, those places are not yeah. Those three schools aren't that far away from Indy. All, they're all an hour and a half to two hours. I think in New Orleans, Kentucky might be two and a half hours. But with Chicago, number one, you're not really competing with the Big Ten tournament because it's on the it's a whole weekend before the Big Ten tournament. And number two, 
There, there are three schools that are within two hours of Indianapolis. There are three schools that are within that are less than an hour from Chicago. Milwaukee, Valpo, and UIC are all an hour away, at least. Or UIC is obviously in town. It depends on what part of Chicago you have the tournament. If you do it at the Sears Center or you do it at the Allstate Arena, then Milwaukee is going to be much closer than Valpo. Well, I think that's the other thing, too, with Chicago, because there's a lot more choices of venue as opposed to Indianapolis. Because Indianapolis, what are your choices in Indianapolis if you do that? If so with that tournament, I mean, market, market, um, you know, where the Pacers are uh, play. No, no way. The Hinkle field house. No, there's the Butler will still be playing there. <laughs> so uh, the fact, the fact of the matter is, is that you, you alienate all those fans that could have been there for a home tournament and you alienate all the people that could have watched your games on television. And, I just think the Horizon League is a, is a conference of one step forward, two steps back in just about everything, and the conference has never spent money on officials. You know, we 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 never have been a, a conference that has been competitive with official pay, and it showed. Hmm. I remember after the Youngstown game on Monday night when we beat. I remember thinking, wow, the officials were very good in this game. And I looked at him, it was Bull Barowski and Joe DeRosa, and, the, and I can't remember the third guy, but there are three guys that generally work high major games or they will generally work uh, better mid uh, the NBC or the Sun Belt or the um, the A-10 or CAA or any number of conferences which are at the Horizon League's level or a little bit ahead of the Horizon League, or at least we thought, you know, the the, the conference has a very um, we have a very difficult time with officiating because we don't pay officials. And we, Funny you mentioned that, by the way. We're actually going to be coming out, uh, on Campus Press Box. We're actually going to be doing a, st- a kind of a feature story on uh, on officiating and kind of all the you know what what goes about with that um, as it relates to pay, incidentals, things like that. Um, so shameless plug. Uh, we'll probably come out before the final four. I, I, I missed the website statsheet dot com. Uh, there was a guy who had put together. Uh, I think the webs the the. Company- Automated insights, uh, and they had statsheet.com, and they would actually uh, keep track of the for you know where they went, what games they officiated, uh, what their really golf calls, violation calls. It was all pretty um, impressive. Hmm. And, uh, you would always see like the Horizon League would always, you know, we, we, we if if the game. <laughs> not on the same days, you know, like if we have a Monday night game or a Wednesday night game, we'll have pretty good referees. If you get to the weekend, some guys that are, you know, the same good referees are going to, you know, some really, you know, some, some conferences that you think are below us. But then you find out that these conferences pay more. So, well, of course they're going to those games. So it's, it's unfortunate the fact of the matter is, is that you know the Horizon League just just we don't don't pay refs. I don't know what the exact numbers are, but in talking to a couple referees, uh, you know, each of them, uh, I've talked to two referees on this. I won't say who they are, but each of them is in a conference that doesn't pay enough. You know, the MVC pays. The MVC has paid almost three times for the Horizon League. Well, well, once again, Jimmy, we'll, 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 uh, I think we're going to get those. Uh, I, I, that's actually going to be, uh, again, that's going to be something we are going to, we're putting together. Um, this whole subject, in comparison. So we're actually going to, uh, if, if um, uh, one of our new, one of our new writers, Kevin McGee, um, Cleveland State guy, by the way. Um, he's going to be putting this uh, this th- that this particular thing together, and um, that'll be it, it's going to be. I it, now that we're having this conversation, particularly about the Horizon League and officiating, I'm going to be very interested in seeing um, kind of the big picture when that when that story comes out. So that's going to be. I'm glad. Wow, we're, 
Put me on the other. Hit you on this one. <laughs> okay. So you you won't have to because you'll be able to see what the numbers are. The exactly. Numbers. And yeah, and this is a, and the, and we're actually we're actually going to like I said we're going to be going. We're going to be going ahead beyond that. We're going to, you know, game check, you know, travel expenses, things like that. So, you know, that's all going to, our, our goal is all that's going to be included. That's all going to be included as a part of this. Hopefully we can, we can, we can, you know, hopefully I, I've got the utmost confidence that Kevin's going to be able to, you know, get all that information. So, yeah. So you're having a conversation, we're having a conversation about just the horizon league. So, I mean, you know. we've run over our time. Uh, beyond, but that's okay. Um, we're going to split this into two. So <laughs> we, we're, this, this is part two. This is the part two of the thing. So, um, when Jimmy goes nuts is what it oh, is. Oh, that's a, that's a name. That's a title of this episode. Congratulations. Um, yeah, we're going to, we, we have, this is, this is part two part. you know, you've, you've listened to part one, which is, you know, the rational part of this. And then part two is Jimmy goes ape shit. <laughs> I'm just I, I'm. I don't think that's going to be the title of the thing, but you get the idea. <laughs> a conference could be so much better than it is, and that's that's the long and short of it. And I, I just don't. I think people need to think about the implications of this Detroit tournament. So, all right. Well, we're going to wrap this up then. Um, yeah, this is probably it. so. Um, all right. Well, that's it. And, you know, fourlights.fm is where you can catch us. So um, be sure to subscribe. Um, I'm sure that's going to go over real well after this. But <laughs> but anyway. Hey, you know, I, it's it's nothing it's, against um, the, so- the teams. I think Cleveland back because I think Waters is smart enough to know. I think McLean. And he's pissed off that everything went as bad as it has this season. So, yeah. Before the dark days, the dark nights before the dawn, I think that Northern Kentucky is not quite there. I think the rest of the conference is we've all got good teams and good, and haven't been able to put it together. And part of it comes back to nobody had this. All right. So that's- so, all right. Well, we'll catch you. We'll we'll catch you guys next week for another episode of the Horizon Roundtable, and um. And that's about it.